Um, this is my uh, new book coming out in three weeks, uh, When We Were Out. It's an intimate chronicle of my life as a 25-year-old political activist. Uh, and in the book, I'm torn between my personal life and my political goals. Um, I, come, I came of age during the last years of the anti-war movement, the violence of the assassinations of the Kennedy brothers, Martin Luther and Malcolm X. And just uh, as I left the convent at the age of 20, I came out and became a radical lesbian activist just at the dawn of the early struggles of the gay movement. And so in, on one level, I sort of walked out of the Garden of Eden, Eden and into the Dante's Inferno. So at that time, I was uh, an investigative reporter for the Los Angeles Free Press, which was an underground radical paper. And I got involved with the uh, Weather Underground there and Angela Davis and Emily Harris of the Symbionese Liberation Army. And that was the SLA that kidnapped Patty Hearst. So at the same time in the book, I'm creating my own magazine in the early days called The Lesbian Tide, which will soon become the voice of the national lesbian feminist community. So I was busy back then. I want to do a reading from the author's note um, to explain more what the book is about as well as the style of writing. I was not born knowing how to love. It came to me late in life and continues to be difficult. Politics, on the other hand, came naturally, my mind attuned from birth to the ways of power and survival. I came to realize in writing this book that a writer has to understand, has to have a deep understanding of love and hate and other primal contradictions in order to have something to say. When we writers sit down, we attempt to sort the good guys from the bad guys and to find what cracks in the foundation of our own character may be moral or immoral. If we write authentically, we find both inside of ourselves. My spiritual teacher, Michael Ventura, told me that writers are not nice people. Luckily, his words didn't depress me because I knew at an early age that I was too butch, too different, and too dangerous to be nice. To be nice is to bore because by definition, nice has no shadow or shade. My memoir visits many outlaws not nice people. I am one such outlaw. I too have been willing to go too far at times. This story takes place at the intersection of the shadow and the shade that differentiates between persona and principle. I have always been fascinated by how a noisy swelling called a social movement arrives on the doorstep of an individual's life and how she or he responds to it. Most of us ignore the calling of these unfathomable energies of our times. For the rest of us, how does one recognize a social movement when it comes calling at your door? And what greatness or despair might follow should you open the door and invite oh someone God, into your life? Jeez. The first step must be to recognize that a stranger of importance has shown up. I'll be back. And I think this kind of recognition must come from listening to the pain in your own body or mind or psyche. One asks oneself, where does it hurt? The pain in my life began at the age of four with the simple act of receiving the wrong Christmas present, a doll. The dissonance in your life might be more obvious. The day you were raped, the night you went to bed hungry, the day your father left home. My pain was subtle and psychic, and I could have ignored it, except that I continued to receive the wrong Christmas present for the next 18 years. 
That was one step in recognizing my social movement when it came knocking. The persistent noise in my head that tells me that the world's reality and your own don't match up. Thank you.